Is white bread unhealthy? Almost no food is either all bad or all good. There are nuances and you have to decide which features are most important for you and your family. White flour has had the brand removed and the germ separated from the endosperm. The endosperm is ground to make the flour. In doing so, most of the fiber and many of the vitamins and minerals that were in the whole grain are no longer present. Most bread manufacturers but not necessarily local bakeries, add nutrients back to try to give the bread the original nutritive value. The trouble is that doesn't really work. The nutrients naturally present in the grain are more readily absorbed than those added back to try to fix loss of them. Scientists say that the natural nutrients are more bioavailable. The fiber naturally present in the grain is also lost in the process of making white flour. Fiber helps keep your bowels regular and reduces the risk of colorectal cancer. But, if your kids won't eat whole wheat bread, and you don't have the time, inclination or skill to make homemade white bread using white whole wheat flour, then the store-bought white bread you can get them to eat might be the best you can do. Or, if you have diverticulitis, and cannot eat whole grain bread without the fiber giving you intense pain, then that white bread might be all you can eat. But, if your family can and will eat whole grain breads, they do indeed contain more numbers of and more bioavailable nutrients than typical white bread, so try as many brands as you need to in order to get one you and your family will eat, then stick with it most of the time. An occasional loaf of a tasty white sourdough bread isn't a bad thing. So, my advice to you and all those who want simple yes-no, good for you, bad for you answers for food and nutrition questions, is this. Life isn't simple. What works for a person for food and nutrition depends on that person's health, chronic illnesses, genetics, stress level, hydration, and on and on. What works for you might not work for your spouse or child. There are no easy answers. You educate yourself and make your best educated guess. If it doesn't agree with you, stop eating it and try something else. It's a learning process, and the answers aren't fixed, they change as your health does. There is nothing inherently unhealthy in white bread. Like any food, eaten in moderation as part of a sensible diet, white bread is fine. There are plenty of good quality breads made with white flour, like traditional French baguettes, sourdough, and other varieties you can find at any decent bakery. There are enriched brads like brioche and challah, also made with white wheat flour, with added eggs, milk, butter or all three. White bread from commercial bakeries, that is full of preservatives and additives, is less healthy than basic bread made with wholesome ingredients. Some bread improvers, for instance, are made with pig's bristles. I know it sounds incredible, but it is true. Chemicals known as E910 and E920 are produced from chicken feathers and hair. It is a common component of bread improver, which helps make the bread rise higher. In fact, since it is more difficult to get a high rise from wholemeal flour, that healthy bread you thought you were buying probably also contains these chemicals. Check the labels, or bake your own bread. This is a problem, even if you think the small amounts of chemicals in the bread aren't going to hurt you. What if you are vegetarian or vegan? What if you are Jewish, keeping kosher, or Muslim and following halal? It's pretty much guaranteed that these animals were not slaughtered in the proper manner, and they are almost certain to be pigs, although other animal hair is also used to produce the chemicals. It was about 150 years ago now that flour millers learned how to make flour from just the inside of the wheat berry, the endosperm. They learned they could soften them with steam and then run them between heavy steel rollers, which squeezed out the stuff in the middle. People liked it better because bread was lighter and softer and smoother. But the producers liked it because it had a huge shelf life. In whole wheat, the germ contains some oils that can go rancid, so you have to refrigerate it. Plus insects and rats didn't get into white flour because it had no nutrition in it. The endosperm is mostly just carbohydrates. Years ago they decided to, enrich, bread by adding some vitamins to the flour. But they didn't put back nearly everything that was lost. Plus, most people today don't get enough fiber in their diet. Most of the ways they process food these days is to extract the fiber. Whole wheat contains the husk of the wheat berry, which is good fiber. But for most of us, bread isn't the most important part of our diet. It's not food, it's what you wrap food in. 
There's nothing really wrong with it if you're not eating it for its nutritional value. White flour is a euphemism for wheat starch. The wheat berry has been milled or pulverized into a finely sifted powder. During this milling process, the bran and germ are removed. The germ is where wheat stores its nutrients. The bran is the source for fiber. Simply put, removing the bran and germ removes all the nutrients and fiber from flour. What's left is protein, aka gluten, but mostly starch, polysaccharides. Polysaccharides are long-chain sugars. To digest these starches, the body has to break the chains down into smaller sugars. To do this, the body draws energy away from other functions and spikes insulin. This is why diabetics stay away from most breads. It's also why people who eat bread often feel tired. To counter these ill effects, you should only buy sourdough breads. A good sourdough bread requires a starter or ferment that can take up to three days and works to break down the polysaccharides as the dough ferments. Better yet, look for sprouted grain breads. Sprouting converts grain to a vegetable, wheat grass. Sprouting as, in itself, is a form of fermentation. Fermentation also interferes with gluten development.